Before we get into today's video, I just want to say thank you to our Patreons. Your support helps the channel and helps fund the giveaways on the channel. If you're interested in becoming one, link down below. But without further ado, guys, let's jump right into it. Another day, another deck. Is this deck something you have to worry about? Is it a deck that can take it to the meta? I think it can. I've been testing it, refining it, and working on it. So... Amethyst Emerald Tempo is a deck that, to no surprise, has been very, very strong this format. However, with the way the format is shifting, this deck actually can get pretty aggressive, taking advantage of things instead of just your Flynn and your Merfolk, but also like Maleficent or even a Pua to get a lot of questing done early. And then it has late game cards to just finish it off and put that cherry on the cake with your Robin Hood the daydreamer and your merlin goat to just again finish off that last little bit of lore let's move on into the deck talk about some matchups and you guys know it replays so here is the deck just over 219 dollars so 220 dollars for the deck we're looking at 13 unequal cards 14 one drops 19 twos and 16 threes then we drop off pretty drastically we were playing four Maleficent, four Merfolk as our one drops. We want to be aggressive, be, be aggressive. So what better way to do that than having multiple questing for two one drop characters? Turn two, we can come out with things like your snake to bounce the Merfolk or Maleficent to protect them and get them back on board later. Or you can come down even more aggressively against say a red blue deck with a Pinocchio star attraction. And before they even start the game, you're going to be at like 7 lore by the time they get their first character on board. And then there's a good chance you can be up to upwards of 12 before they even get to challenge your characters. Pua and Flynn, also more multi-questing um, early cost cards that you can play. Your Ursula helps you take out songs. Your Madame Mim Fox for that sneaky bounce rush aspect. Kit Cloud Kicker helping to bounce your opponent's cards to be able to protect your questers to make them recast them so they cannot take you out. Ursula Deceiver of All still made her way into this deck. You absolutely can cut this card. You can play this deck without Ursula, which again would drop the deck to possibly under $100. So maybe you want to do that. I don't blame you. However, if you have this card, drawing four is too broken not to play in addition when you're getting super aggressive and putting all these threats on board and then you put in ursula your opponent actually has to stop and say what do you deal with do you deal with the questers right now or do you take out the potential draw four because can you deal with that in the long run additionally we have four goats one rabbit makes his way back into our list one genie on the job and then three Robin Hood Daydreamer. When you get to a point where you're at like 15, 16 ideally or more lore and you get to just throw this card down and threaten four more, your opponent must remove it right then and there. Otherwise, you're getting four lore off of just one card. And it's inkable, so why not? Um, I guess actually this list is slightly outdated. I cut this on Pixelborn. However, it is still here on this. What did we play it in this spot? I will be right back. Oh, for Befuddle too, because Befuddle, like your snake, helps you deal with those cards and protect your cards from being challenged too early on. Okay, so we actually cut the I'm Stucks, and there's one other card that had to have been cut. What is going on here? My computer is not cooperating. And then again, we have the four friends on the other side, because you want to be able to draw four potentially. Like, it's just too good not to draw four. Why wouldn't you want to draw four? And then lastly, two Queen's Castle. So again, we cut the um, the I'm Stucks for, uh, we cut the I'm Stucks, sorry, for our, uh, can't even talk now, the Wildcat mechanic, because the evasive is nice because he sticks around for a couple more turns and is a little harder to deal with. However, being able to exert him to take out your opponent's items, such as Lucky Dime and things like that, those sleepy flutes, 
and other cards that can be very problematic came out more than the I'm Stuck did. I'm Stuck was kind of like a worse version of Befuddle that just did not pan out. So I apologize that I didn't update Dreamborn. However, my Pixelborn is a little more updated. Let's go ahead and look at our matchups. So Ruby Amethyst. I actually like this matchup a lot with this deck. I think for how aggressive we are, it works out really, really well. They have things like the Pinocchio Talkative Puppet who can exert your characters. That can be a problem, especially in tandem with like Mim Fox with Rush. But even that's a five cost total. Um, turn three, I mean, if they play Snake, turn two, play Puppet, turn three. Use Snake to take out your card that way, it would work. Um, Maui with Rush, but usually by turn five, you're at like 12 plus lore anyway. Uh, Medusa obviously is going to be able to hit your cards, but again, by the time they play Medusa, you're just about one anyway. Um, against this deck, I like to, if you can get like three, four characters stuck on board, you're going to, like I said, easily get to like 12 lore early. Don't keep putting your entire hand on the board necessarily. Think about things like assume they have Maui and Medusa in their hand and play your hand that way. If they have a third threat, you can't assume that all the time. But Fox, Medusa, Maui, assume they have two of them at any given time when you're playing your hand out. So don't necessarily put your entire hand on the board, but at the same time, don't play too slow. This matchup actually is not that bad. I really enjoy it. However, this matchup, I do not. It's Steel Song. It is Grab Your Swords, which wrecks our deck. Luckily, we play things like Ursula to hit that Grab Your Swords. Unfortunately, when it seems like they play a whole new world, they happen to hit Grab Your Swords and Strength of the Raging Fire and Let the Storm Rage On. And they just hit like three or four cards that they needed out of their new seven. And it's just like, man, oh man, this happens only online. In real life, it seems to not happen as much. Algorithms, excuses, whatever we want to call it. Probably the latter, if we're being honest. But anyway, I think this matchup's a little unfavorable. However, it is still winnable, especially if you can get up early, play things like Kit, unfortunately bouncing the aerial, because you don't want them singing on turn three or on turn four, that swords. You'd rather them hard casting it when they have five ink instead. So, unfortunately, you may have to use your Kit Cloud Kicker and bounce that aerial. Otherwise, trying to remove the Cinderella with something like Befuddle, also very helpful because then they cannot use the Let the Storm Rage On or Strength of the Raging Fire on turn two. The mirror match against the Tempo deck. Um, how would I play this one out? Um, with tempo i've said it before that's my main deck i'm actually very comfortable against aggro so just trying to think outside of what i would necessarily do as the tempo player like what would i do as the aggro player um you have to find a way to set the pace and make them play to you this deck you can't let them set the tempo because if they set tempo and then they get to use their bounce cards to take you out you're in trouble. If you can set the pace and make them react to you, you have a chance. You have a fighting chance then. So that's your best bet. You have to be the one to set the tempo. Blue red. What do you do against blue red? Um, I think this deck's actually very favorable. The time they take to set up, you have the queen um, that you worry about right away. But other than her, like you get two, three, sometimes four turns where you can just build, 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 and you win this matchup pretty easily. I think this matchup's very favorable. So let's go ahead into those replays. So here we are, Steel, sa uh, Sapphire, not, yeah, Sapphire Steel. Seriously, should not be doing the two things I'm doing right now, recording videos and it's just too difficult. Anyway, Sapphire, Steel, Resist. We have three replays for this one because I like this deck too much to just do two for you guys. Going first, Befuddle, Ursula, 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 Mim, Kicker, Maleficent. There's not a whole lot to bounce here. We don't have our song, and this one, unlike Tempo, we're only playing the one song, so I don't necessarily keep the Ursula. It's more if you have her and can do it, it feels great. Our other Ursula, I was like, 
the hand knowledge is actually going to be really nice. Other than that, she's ink. And of course, we hit our friends and a couple uninkable cards. Good thing we have that Ursula as ink. So we have Pinocchio, Maleficent, Befuddle. We're actually sitting pretty good. We can get very aggressive early on. So debating what we do, we get rid of that fox or the snake, sorry, player Maleficent. I'm expecting like develop your brain or a popsicle here. Uh, just kind of their turn one typical play lines. Oops, didn't mean to pause the video. So we see Cogsworth get inked and then Popsicle, just like we thought, would come down. We draw a card, or he draws a card, and we draw into another snake. We can go ahead and ink that now and now throw down our Pinocchio. So we're going to quest to two, threaten five more. So again, like we mentioned earlier, you can get to seven against these types of decks very, very quickly. Develop your brain gets inked, and a Smee comes down. So at least it's not Ruby where, say, something like Queen could come down with Rush. And we actually have the Befuddle here, too. So Befuddle can bounce that Smee and set him back one more turn. Now we get to go up to 12 before he can do anything. Unfortunately, that Smee does have three attack. So our Kit Cloud Kicker isn't going to be able to take it out. If it would, well, that would just be too good. We see Captain Hook get inked and Fishborn Quill comes down, actually. Quill then inks another card. That was interesting to me. I feel like you have to put that Smee back down because I'm going to 12 here otherwise. And you didn't put a character down. Like, what, what are you going to do here? We draw into our Ursula. We have our friends. This is why I don't mind uh, mulliganing Ursula because by the time you get both cards and are ready for her, it doesn't really matter. So now we're threatening 17 plus draw 4 on turn 5. So by turn 5 we can go to 17 and draw 4. He can ink a card. Still play a Hades. But even then we draw 4, go to 14. And instead Fishborn and Quill and Smee come down. Which essentially means we win this game. There's, I guess, what would it be? Grab your swords would be the only hope he could potentially have but then we draw four we have our daydreamer we get rid of we're at 17 we play the goat we go to 18 we play the merfolk so again be or not be prepared grab your swords which is what he has okay so kind of makes sense smee can also take out the ursula but at the same time then we quest with goat and then once goat leaves we win the game so Kind of a questionable play line, I guess. Um, like that doesn't, right there doesn't mean anything. So we can quest with Goat, and guess what? That means we win the game. Uh, get rid of the Ursula, and then throw her Daydreamer down, because we can. Even if he, say, Hades and puts our Goat in the Inkwell, well, we still win the game. So that isn't going to help him any. A Flavisham comes down. Uh, try and skip ahead here. We do get that win, because again... If Goat leaves or request, we win the game. So, Emerald, Amber here. Going first, uh, we have Yzma, Chernabog, Snake, the Ursula. I was playing Yzma at one point. Sorry, some of these replays come before I make changes in the deck. Um, I was playing one Yzma with the three uh, Robin Hood six cost, but I ended up cutting the Yzma just because, well, there was better options. So instead, we're looking, we're going to get rid of Ursula, Ursula. We're going first. So we have a couple one drops. We have the Chernabog as ink or another potential play. We get our singer back for potential or we can ink her. We don't need two snakes, so we can ink one, play our Maleficent, pass turn. I was actually wrong. There is only two replays here also. Um... The last one I had a bunch of technical difficulties with that I don't feel like dealing with. So we're going to stop it at the end of this. We see our opponent's hand here. Kit, Flynn, Prince, Simba, Simba, Sir Hiss, and Strike a Good Match. So I see the Prince John and I instantly think, okay, it is Amber Emerald discard. I'm okay with that. We're going to dump our hand quick. I'm not worried about getting discarded. And we're going to outpace him because things like Bucky, Prince John, they can't go hand to hand with challenging so we're sitting in a pretty good spot. We can quest, quest, ink the Ursula, because we don't want to build our hand up against discard, bounce, and then replay her ready, pass turn. 
Now we're also sitting in a spot where soon we won't have a hand left, so we're pretty good at this moment. I will work on other replay videos, like more just no deck profile, no talking matchups, just longer replay videos on a bunch of these decks as well as we test and get ready for our set championship. Uh, sudden Chill comes down, so we're going to discard. He's going to draw a card. I'm okay with that. Not too worried. Uh, we're sitting pretty good board presence-wise, and we draw into a goat. So we quest, uh, get rid of our Chernabog so we can go ahead and play our goat. Quest, quest, and say next turn... There's a lot of options. We could like quest Maleficent, play Fox, challenge with Fox, replay the Maleficent, ink whatever we draw. So we could potentially have no cards in hand. I mean, obviously you'd ink your card before you challenge the Flynn. Otherwise, you know, you're going to discard it. So you may as well ink it. Or if it's uninkable, then you just discard it. Instead, he does shift into the four drop. However, 10 to zero with the presence we have, the Simba's not going to matter either because we're not needing to challenge. And we draw in two friends on the other side. So we're going to ink that. Challenge, or quest, 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 quest. Then we can go ahead, bounce, and we're going to get that extra lore from our goat to seven, 16, sorry. So we're sitting pretty good here. We have goat in hand, so we actually only need three. We have fox, so... Fox is one. We need two more. He has to take out two of our characters or, well, he just loses the game. So he could have Simba into, like you Prince John into Maleficent, you Simba into Ursula, and you Flynn into Ursula, and then I don't win the game outright. I would only go to 19. However, you're so far behind at this point too because it would have been 16 to 3 then. That going down 19 to 3 with a goat on board, it's essentially like losing the game. So he does bounce our Ursula. So again, he goes to 7. Sir Hiss gets inked. We can challenge, take that out because it's not going to matter at this point. We can't win this turn. Take out the Prince John again. Just to any potential, maybe somehow, some way, he comes back. Play the goat, go to 17, play the Maleficent. And we're sitting at 17 to 3. His Flynn can quest him for four, but he gives us the game. Again, I do apologize. I didn't think of it until now. Um, I had a lot of issues with this last replay, so I don't want to have to try and sort through all that for you guys. But thanks for watching. Until next time, like, share, subscribe. Bigger, longer, more in-depth gameplay videos in the works for a bunch of the decks that we've been doing. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time, take care.